this uh, is the training experiment that we've built last time. And I'm, I'm going to go quickly over the parts that make this experiment. Uh, this is the Azure Machine Learning Studio. Um, and we see how we're loading data from a CSV file. We then clean that uh, some of the um, uh, uh, missing data values uh, in the data set. Uh, we split data into a training and test data set. We've used a, uh, uh, a two-class logis logistic regression algorithm to uh, predict churn. Uh, we used part of that data to train our model, score it by uh, actually producing those uh, uh, predicted churn values, and finally evaluate it. This is simply just kind of uh, seeing how good our model is, uh, and um, we've seen how the accuracy was just around 0.8%, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, lift is pretty good. Area under the curve is, is pretty uh, uh, high, so we're, we're happy with this uh, model, okay? So the next step in this process is to convert a training experiment into a predictive, a predictive experiment, and, um, and uh, Azure does a really good job at doing this uh, almost on the fly. Uh, now, this model looks pretty similar to the uh, training experiment with some notable differences. Um, first of all, we're no longer loading the data from uh, the CSV file, that telecommunication data set that we were having. Instead, we are loading the data from an Azure SQL database, which is the, the Azure SQL database that we talked about in that architecture slide. We're still doing some of those uh, transformations that we're doing before, selecting. Uh, columns, uh, um, it, we are no longer training the model. Instead, and this is kind of hard to tell, but um, um, this is actually called, uh, I guess you can only see it from the hint. Yeah, it's it's called a trained model. So, and it's linked directly to the, the, the model that uh, we were using in a training experiment. We still score it because this is what outputs the um, uh, predictive, uh, predicted churn. And finally, rather than just uh, ex uh, exploring the, the, I mean, evaluating uh, the results, we are uh, exporting the data back to the Azure SQL database, this time into a separate table. Uh, and it's gonna be a simple table. We're just uh, uh, exporting customer ID and the predicted churn, okay? So this is pretty straightforward. We had the training experiment, converted it into a predictive experiment, and then the final step is to deploy this as a web service. Uh, so we're deploying the predictive experiment as a web service, which effectively makes it available to be invoked from outside the Azure uh, ML environment. And I, I'm not going to, I already have the model, I'm not going to upload that, I'm just gonna go to the existing model and I have a, a nice little dashboard here, but I wanted to take a look at the various ways to consume that web service. And this page uh, looks pretty dense, um, but but uh, it's actually pretty easy to understand. What we have here are code excerpts that we can simply copy and paste into a third-party application that we're developing, for instance, and this is in, uh, available in a variety of languages, uh, starting with C-sharp, but also including Python and R. So, uh, so literally, we can just copy and paste this into, let's say, an SSIS uh, ETL uh, script component. I'm not going to do that today. Um, they're also giving us some options to call this very easily directly from Excel. So I'm just gonna use this uh, Excel link here uh, to kind of run our, um, our web service and our predictive experiment. Um, and the Excel is uh, just has this very simple sort of interface here. I'm selecting my web service, which was that churn M uh, ML telecom predictive experiment this time, and I'm just pressing that predict. This this invokes the web service, and once that um, uh, stuff is done, then uh, now we have data available in the Azure SQL database uh, where we set up the outputs. Okay, so um, so with this, 
let's go back to our initial dashboard and and uh, kind of set up what we're trying to do here from from a business standpoint um, so we're, we know a lot more about the customers but we were told that uh, we are losing a lot of customers we're losing uh, some of our big spenders uh, and our task now is to um, use the churn uh, model that uh, the data scientists put together to uh, to create a mechanism to uh, identify our biggest spenders that are predicted to churn and target those with specifically with a, a, a laser focused marketing campaign. So the first thing that we need to do is bring that churn data into our model. So we're just going to go here. Uh, recent sources connect to the table where the results were written. Like I said, those were that's a very simple table, a customer ID and predicted churn. Uh, we're loading that. That should only take a second. And now we have our new data source. I'm going to just rename this to churn. Uh, the, the only one thing that uh, we need to do is link that churn database, that churn table with the, uh, with the customer table. So we're just creating a, a relationship between those two. And now we can go ahead and uh, build uh, a dashboard or, or something else that allows me to create that marketing campaign. So I have kind of pre-configured uh, something here uh, that it will give us a starting point. Uh, basically, what we've done here was to um, quantify that uh, initial ask, which was to identify our biggest spenders. So how do we actually go about doing that? We are grouping um, uh, the customer base uh, based on their lifetime value. We're grouping them into quintiles. And, and so uh, and we gave uh, those quintiles some fun names so that uh, you know we can have some uh, uh, good conversations uh, in the boardroom about that uh, but our um, our biggest spenders uh, we call them swans uh, roughly 20 percent of the population the swans are bringing 54 percent of the pop of the uh, business in uh, the second group uh, are the geese uh, they are bringing 28 percent and if we select both uh, swans and geese uh, we can see that they're bringing in just a little bit over 80% of the business. So uh, just our top two groups, top two quintiles bring more than 80% of the business. So def this is de definitely, these are definitely groups that we need to be um, uh, concerned with. So let's see, um, uh, I'm gonna use this uh, visualization, which is co actually co called a tornado chart. Uh, chart uh, and I'm gonna drop that predicted uh, churn in here. And then from the customer, I want uh, the number of customers, the count of customers. Uh, and then finally, let's drag the spending quintiles in groups. And let's quickly change the colors here so we can better see what's going on. Um, okay, so now this chart uh, in a very clear uh, visual way uh, shows us that um, um, you know, most of my swans are kind of here to stay. We only have about 18 of them that are, that are predicted to churn. Uh, so there's not a whole lot that we want to do there. Uh, this group, however, the uh, the goose uh, quintile, uh, we have 241. These are fairly big spenders. They bring in a good amount of business and 20, 241 of them are uh, predicted to churn. You can click on that to or, or select that group to kind of see what the demographic makeup is. So we can see that about 50% of the, those are senior citizens. So that gives me an idea of kind of maybe creating a specialized message for those that are senior citizens that are uh, predicted to churn versus the ones that are not. So I'm going to select, let's say, just the senior citizens. Uh, and we're back to that group, 124. And finally, what I want to do here for those 144, I want to be able to produce a list. I'm just dropping in a, a customer ID as well as their email account, um, their email address. Uh, so now I have a list of 124 uh, fairly big spenders that are predicted to churn. They're all senior citizens, and I can take this list export it as some, something else, a CSV file, 
that I can now send to uh, send to my um, uh, campaign manager to to run that campaign. Thank you.